See on a hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. And look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from his side. No greater sacrifice. What he's done, what he's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what he's done.
So I will take heart in deserts and gardens. He has good. If I know my father, I know my father Jesus, that today we can experience through your presence 
Jesus, something that God will deposit in every heart in this place or to those watching online, Lord, that you have good plans. And surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. So Jesus, whatever, whatever heart, whatever family, whatever individual in this place that needs to be reminded of that, Jesus, today, deposit in our hearts, you have good plans plans, Jesus. We thank you, God. We give you all the honor and glory, Jesus. And we thank you that today, God, we get to experience you together. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Angela's Temple, the Church of the Dream Center. Thank you guys so much for being here on this rainy Sunday. You guys are amazing. You guys are awesome. Welcome. If you are visiting here today, or maybe you've been coming for the past couple weeks and you're wanting to know a little bit more about what Angelus Temple is, who we are as a church, the heart and vision of Angelus Temple and the Dream Center, and most importantly, how you can be a part of that. We have a Next Steps class that we do after every service, and it's right across from our cafe, which is right through those doors, and right, there's a room right there, and it's our Next Steps room, and right there after service, you can ask questions, and it's an opportunity for our team to get to know you and get you plugged in to the heart and life of this church and help you serve this great city with us. And something that we do every single service is we love to hear a life-changing story, a testimony about one of the ministries of this church and really through one of the programs right down the street at the Dream Center. And today we get to hear from Lucia, who is a part of our Emancipated Youth Foster Home. And so I'd like to invite her out right now and we're going to get to hear her share her heart about what God has done through her life since she has been a part of this church and the Dream Center. So, Lucia, come on out. Why don't you share with us what Jesus has done in your life? Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Lucia Juarez. You know, some of y'all know me by my daughter, Aria. Um, I just came here to share my story. I've been through going through a rough time, you know, since I was a child. Um, I'm a family of five, you know, I have four siblings. We got taken away. We ended up in DCFS, and I went through a domestic, like, you know, an abusive domestic home. And I was afraid by my own mom, my mom. And later, from, you know, me and my brother and his sister and all that. And... I couldn't go back with my mom because she didn't finish all the classes she had to do. Mm. So I ended up being in, in foster care for many years. Mm. And I turned 21. I had nowhere to go. I had a child. And I was going through a rough time around when I turned 21, because you know, when you turn 21, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. There's no, they don't give you service, it's just like, you know, you're on your own. And I came to the Dream Center the first time. I don't think I was ready. I made a lot of mistakes, but I fell in love. Like, I trust, I gave my trust to that person. <laughs> I only end up hurting myself all over again. I got pregnant. <laughs> I was sleeping, you know, friends to friends, house to the houses again, going through the same thing. You know, I don't know what's, like, what am I doing? What did I be doing, you know? And, um, I came again to the Dream Center, and I talked to Ms. Lay. She told me to just come back. And I was ready to give out everything. <laughs> now I have a son, I have a daughter, and I'm ready to accomplish everything that I came for. Finish my bachelor degree. All I want to say that if you're like, you know, 21, 18, you don't know where to go, whatever, do you have a family over here? Yeah. That they will support you, they will give you love. 
You're not alone. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. All I want to say is thank you to God. Remember that if you don't put God first, then your relationship's not going to work out. It's not. Thank you. Incredible. Come on, you got to give the Lord thanks for that. What a testimony. First, he turn to the person next to you and say, God really does have good plans. Come on, tell them that. It's amazing, amazing. Wow. Well, good morning. It's good to see everybody today. And uh, on this, I've never seen the roads more open in my entire life. Uh, but it's good to see everyone here today. It's such an honor to have you. And thank you for being here in the house of God and, and hearing testimonies like this and stories. This is amazing what the Lord is doing. Come on, can we give the Lord thanks for what he's doing all over this room right now? Come on. Awesome things that are happening. Hey, check it out. We have a big event coming up called Night of Dreams. And uh, we're just going to really like, really push also a lot of our church members to be a part of this as well. Wow. I know it's a, it's a, it's a $450 uh, donation for Night of Dreams, and that is to get a seat, the dinner, the entertainment, everything. But it's going to be an unbelievable night. This year we have uh, Jensen Franklin that's going to be there with us. We have a whole, uh, Michael Jr., one of the greatest comedians now in the country, that's going to be there. Uh, we have Coffee Anderson's coming back, and, uh, and then uh, there's a chance we're, we're working on it. We're hope to get The Rock to make an appearance as well. And uh, so uh, just going to be an awesome night. So $450. I'll, I'll give you more confirmation on that uh, soon. But uh, we should know pretty fast. I've been working with the, their, their people after he came to the Dream Center. Dwayne Johnson saw the place. And I said, if we could just have you for 15 minutes, you'd come in, speak for 10 minutes, and just walk out. But uh, we'd love to have you. And so uh, he's going to be there possibly. We'll see. But it's $450 for the event. And so we're looking forward to all of you signing up on dreamcenter.org. Also in the back, Justin, who is waving his hands right there, he is going to be available after to help you sign up online in the information booth in the lobby. So if you want to buy a ticket, go right to the information booth, and Justin will help you sign up, get you a table, a sign, everything, take care of you after service today. So please sign up for Night of Dreams. It's going to be a night that you will never truly forget. And I really like... Um, I just really like, you know, Jensen Franklin being there. Just, it's just kind of a, it's going to be a different type of year, but it's just going to be a wonderful time together, and we look forward to seeing that. It's going to be amazing. Amen. And uh, Thursday night, we're going to have an awesome speaker, Pastor Jeremy. It's hard to say his last name, but Pastor Jeremy, he's an unbelievable pastor in Houston. He actually, what's happening in his church is truly amazing. He uh, came here from, um, from Africa to pastor a church in Houston, and I mean, it's going through the roof there. So you are going to love him this week, a brand new friend that we've met. It's going to be a great time on Thursday night. And Thursday night, wasn't that amazing Thursday? I think we had the biggest Thursday night service we had all summer, and we had no teams. It was like, I, I was astonished how huge Thursday night was. So I uh, uh, look forward to seeing you there. We're going to receive the offering now and encourage all of you uh, to give today to make a difference. This is the last, no it's not, it's the last Sunday, it's close to the last Sunday of the month of August and uh, it is, God has been so good. I, I, I'm not going to say it hasn't been a little bit scary <laughs> because it's been very scary. It's been walking on the tightrope all summer long uh, trying to keep this engine going, you know, um, with everything that's happened, with the cost of everything, it's, take, it's gone through the roof. And, and, uh, but yeah, you know, we're, we're, as Elton John said, we're still standing. Yeah, we're just still standing. But uh, I don't know if he's a disciple or not. I don't think, I don't know. But anyways, but, uh, but we've just been hanging in there, fighting the fight, helping people, serving, making a difference, loving, and just God's been so good. And you can't say God's good only when you're in unbelievable abundance. You also say God, say God is good when you're just in survival, right? And hanging in there. So as we receive this offering today, I want to encourage every one of you to give generous and uh, and just to say, God, you have good plans for me, so I trust you with what I have because I know that your plan is always a plan that responds to faith. Good plans always come in relation to faith. And we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by generosity, not in holding back. We operate on the offense, not on the defense. We operate on taking ground, not giving background. Amen. That's who we are. That's why God gave us the full armor of God, right? And he gave us no armor to wear in the back because he never intended for us to show our backside to the enemy. 
That's why we have the full armor, right? And giving is a part of that expression of outward advancing. So let's just advance this morning. Let's, maybe a few people can make up a difference this morning on this rainy day. We're holding up pretty well this morning, but of course down because a lot of people are listening to the news, which they shouldn't be. Uh, well, I guess enough to get alerts, but after that you're done. All right, just turn it off. Enough to get a basic idea of what's going on. But uh, let's trust God to give today. Lord, we thank you for everyone that's here today. We receive this offering with great joy, great anticipation of what you're about to do. And we know that there's always a miracle in the house. And that miracle might be everyone doing their part. The miracle might be one or two stepping up in addition to everybody else. But Lord, whatever it may be, it's going to be awesome because you are God and you, you have good plans and you're about to do something amazing. We thank you for this incredible testimony that reminds us that it's worth a fight every day. And Lord, and even the message that she gave when she said, she said to me, come on back. Boy, isn't that the kingdom of God? Isn't that the church? We don't say you're gone. We say come on back because we love to have you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. And uh, those are all the ways to give on the screen. The generosity that's been unleashed online here, everywhere, God, we bless those today, Lord, who have just stepped out and just continue to trust and sow and give. May they have a harvest that will always allow them to be a blessing everywhere they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to speak this morning on the subject of enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 6. But Timothy has just now come to us from you, and he has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that, you, and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day, we pray earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. One thing I love about the Apostle Paul is that he was dealing with so many churches that were struggling to move forward, to advance. And he would always spend time, you know, in, in the parts of the Bible that we always look over, you know, greetings and salutations. We're like, okay, let's get to the good part. And we kind of move past them. But that's really a good part because what he's trying to do is when he's writing letters to these churches, he's trying to tell them and encourage them that they're doing good. That you're on the right track. Just keep on going. And later he'll address some things that they need to fix. But he always starts off with overwhelming encouragement because he's trying to build something that we always have to watch that we can lose as believers. And something that we can always lose through life, circumstances, pain, setbacks, trials, reversals, betrayals, all of that. And that is the devil is always trying to get to that place of enthusiasm of our life. He's trying to take away the greatest gift that we have to give to the world, and that is the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
So he's fighting that. He's, he's battling that. He's dealing with that. But he's dealing with it, first of all, from the place of enthusiasm and encouragement. And how many here know that it's important before you rebuke someone, you got to start off and talk about the good that they have done, right? I always knew my dad was about to rebuke me growing up because he would give me a long list of encouraging things I've done well. And then I'm like, oh, no, what's coming next, right? You know, it's like, yeah, you're good at this, son. You're good at this. And then I'm like, thank you, dad. I'm like, oh, no, what's coming next? But uh, he was trying to encourage at the same time, if there's ever a time that our world needs encouragement, it's right now. Because how many know we live in a world, I mean, recently I heard a, a report on television that said that in Chicago, there's certain times now they're begging people not to commit crimes. Certain times on weekends they're like, don't commit crimes in this area now because they have given up the idea that people could rise above this or be more or maybe provide opportunities for some of the people that are doing these things because when you have no vision and dream for your life and there's no one advocating for you, of course you're going to be committing crime. And so instead of dealing with those things, it's like, don't commit a crime during these hours. As if to say, you know, we don't really believe that there's anything more. But as God's people, we ought to speak enthusiasm all the time. We ought to speak hope and expectation all the time. You know, yeah, yesterday, um, with all that was um, taking place with the reports of the hurricane, we, we get a phone call from um, Officer Press from the LAPD, and he said, would you take a family into the Dream Center because they're living in a tent, and they just got uh, evicted out of their place. They've been living in a tent in an alley. Would you take them in? And our team said, of course, 100%. Yes. And I'm getting this text from Kelly explaining the whole situation of what's going on. And in the end, she says, I told them we'll take him in at 5.30 today and then we'll like, process them on Tuesday to get further along in their development. And then, and then the second text she sent back to me was, there she is, the second uh, text she sent back to me was, uh, thank you so much. She goes, I love my job so much. You know, inconvenience on a Saturday at 5.30, which we don't believe in the gift of inconvenience. We believe the gift of inconvenience is powerful, right? But at 5.30, getting that message and then responding to it and then providing a solution. I thought, wow. And then you look at our world today that says don't praise kids too much or don't encourage them too much because they might grow up smug. And that's the worst advice I ever heard in my entire life. I mean, right? God forbid we raise kids in this nation who have a little bit of love and support and encouragement, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like, don't, don't encourage them too much. They might grow up prideful. But can I tell you something? Encouragement doesn't bring smugness. Encouragement brings humility because the essence of encouragement is to lift somebody else up. It's so when you encourage your kids, when you encourage people around you, that spirit gets in them and eventually it's going to pass on to somebody else. The ultimate sign of humility is enthusiastically lifting up another person. And there is such an assault of our generation right now of any positive value is that the moment someone sees a parent lavish love or encouragement or praise, I mean, we even try to kill that, right? Oh, they're overbearing over their kids because they're encouraging them too much, you know. Because we see it as unnatural or overbearing to be expressive. No, it's not. It's called being a Christian. That's what it's called, a Christian parent. And if all your kids ever know is all the wrong things that, that are done in this world and all the, the sins that they should not commit, if that's all they ever know, they will depart from the gospel. But they will always come back to a message that says there is a God that loves you and believes in you and is there for you and will be there to receive you. I mean, you can't encourage enough. You can't encourage enough. You can't build up enough. You can't inspire enough. You can't give hope enough. I mean, do you know what makes me mad? People that just can't get enthusiastic about anything. You know, I say something to them, man, that's awesome. Yeah, well, well, you should see the other side of that issue. <laughs> man, you won't believe what just happened. Well, wait till it's going to happen. If you live long enough, you'll find out what's going to happen down the road, right? You take someone to a nice dinner and the food is good, and you say, man, wasn't that food good? And they just say, I've had better. Chefs must be on vacation today because I've had it before. And it's not quite as good as it is today. You know, you just paid like $5,000 for it, right? And that's just McDonald's, not anywhere else. But uh, I mean, smug is when you're, when you're too good to show a little bit of excitement. Like you're too cool for that. When someone does something nice for you, uh, we're too important, right, to show a little bit of uh, emotion and happiness. 
And when someone asks you how you're doing, uh, give yourself the permission to say something magnificent. Don't just say, I'm fine. Say, yeah, I'm awesome. Even if you don't believe it, live your life with a little bit of enthusiasm. Say, yes, I'm doing good. You'll say, what if I don't believe it? You say it long enough, you'll start believing it. What if I don't feel it? You say it long enough, you'll start to feel it. It wouldn't hurt some of us to get excited about say, every, something in life every once in a while. The Bible says that we ought to think on things that are good, pure, just, holy. If there's any good report, think on these things. you got to decide what to think about so it will get into your, your mouth so that you can have something to praise about. We need some enthusiastic people in this world that will inspire a tired, worn out, depleted world. I know that the world is getting tough. I know that it's a cold world out there. I know that all too often... Young people are watching other young kids, like literally overdose online, things that we have never seen before in our culture. And I know that it's tragic, and, and even like my son, this all summer when he went to Skid Row and all the team and the workers here, they were going out, and uh, different parts of L.A., they have, we have to bring those Narcan now to, like, to bring someone back to life again on outreach. We never had that before in order to keep them alive. And even my son, 17, has seen people um, practically dead on the side of the road and, 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 and all summer long, things we've never seen before in our history. But that's why more than ever before, we ought to encourage ourselves in the Lord so that we might be enthusiastically excited about the faith that we have to give this world something they long for so deeply. And Paul was enthusiastic about his love for the churches. He would say, I'm proud of you for this. You have this going for you. And isn't that awesome? Don't you think we ought to be that way? We ought to go around telling the world, you know what? Um, you got this going for you. You have this going for you. Uh, you. You really have something going for you if you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. But it's time. I've never seen the three weeks in a row, our Thursday night speakers have told me that walking out the door at, with those steps, you know, the longest steps in the world that get to the parking structure. I mean, those steps are so long that people walk them in order to please their God and repent, you know, at the end of the stairs. They're so long. But three times at the base of those stairs in a row, at the base, the exact location, pastors on the way out the door on Thursday night have said to me exactly at the same spot, more than ever, our world needs encouragement. Three times at the same spot, three weeks in a row. When was the last time you just enthusiastically told someone, I love you? When's the last time that you just said, I believe in somebody who has failed you over and over and over again? You know, you know college football is coming up this week, right? And college football is coming this way. And if you watch, like, there's so many college football games on television. If you have, like, direct TV, you, you, there's, like, if you just scroll through the channels, you'll be, like, North Dakota State versus Wyoming. You know, and so you're watching these games. They're, they're everywhere, right? And um, you know what I love about college football, though, because if you watch and, 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 they, and they pan to the cheerleaders, it doesn't matter what the score is on the game. If it's 56 to nothing, uh, they'll always do a shot of the cheerleaders. They're down 56 to nothing. They're like... I mean, 56 to nothing, man. They're still smiling and dancing. I thought, man, that's a great way to live life. Even when you're down 56 to nothing, you're not out. Just keep smiling. Just keep enthusiastically showing the world how Christians overcome trials, how Christians overcome hard times. It's not always going to be easy. You might have to fake it sometimes. But faking it's not always being inauthentic. Faking it sometimes is truly being true to God's version of yourself, not being true to yourself. Our world says be true to yourself. No, be true to God's version of yourself. And that is suck it up, buttercup, smile because someone needs you when you're down. Serve because someone needs you when you need to be served. Served. And Paul's pattern consistently going out of his way, telling the church how much he believed in them. And I believe that God wants us to live our life that way. I mean, to live our life, speak with enthusiasm. Say, how are you doing today? What's going on in your life? Uh, uh, it's, thank you for the donuts today. I mean, whatever you got to do, just speak it. And I want to be like Paul in his letter writing who could not stop telling of his immense love and belief in the church. And I'm just going to speak, I keep speaking life of the church. But oh, the church got so many hypocrites who failed the ministry. I know, but you know what? Someone else is coming up and the ones who failed, God's going to redeem them too. You know what? You know why pastors on Thursday night, like the last three weeks, we've had pastors go over their time on Thursday nights. 
They have. I've yeah, given them time to preach because I know it's a school night Thursday night. You know, we're trying to like balance like being free flowing and then having school the next night. So I'm like, you know, 30. And uh, I said, if you go over a couple of minutes, it's no big deal. <laughs> and then they go over like 15, 20 minutes. You know why they do that? Because they've never had such an enthusiastic crowd to preach to as you guys. You're drawing it out of them. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. I just was having so much fun uh, preaching to your church. I couldn't stop. And I said, yeah, praise God. We'll just take away $10 from every minute you go over. Anyways, but, uh, no, I'm just teasing. But. Encouragement. That's why they feel the enthusiasm. Start getting out of the pattern of acting tired and worn out all the time. Get out of the tight pattern of being tired and worried. Because what's going to happen is addicting before long. Um, everything about your life will feel like you're beat down and you're tired. You have got to convince yourself. You have got to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what David did. He literally had a conversation with himself. He said, be encouraged, self. And he talked to himself. Some of you need to start talking to yourself a little bit more. You'll see people think I'm crazy in the car if I do. I, I have people all the time. I pep talk myself, man. I'll put on some like, I, I know this sounds weird, but Dr. Dre instrumental. Dun, 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 dun. No words because I'm trying to pray, but I like the beat. I'm like, I'm fired up. I'm a child of God. Dun, 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 dun. The words would take me out of the presence of God, but the beat, I don't know, it just kind of works. And sometimes I just like hype myself in the car, but I just start pounding on that. People think I'm nuts. People are making phone calls to the police and everything, and uh, people please pull me over. There'd be like, someone's like said that you were uh, freaking out in your car, and you're talking, and they're, they're just trying to catch me riding dirty. But I'm just not, it's not that way, you know. And <laughs> Enthusiasm. Someone hit your knee, let it pop up a little bit. It's an I can spirit. It's a we can do a mantra. And you know what falls apart? Marriages fall apart when people uh, lack enthusiasm anymore. Churches fall apart when they lack enthusiasm. And that I can spirit. You look at any sports franchise, you look at any major business, any church that has turned the corner, any organization that's gone from something to dead to alive, you will always see one thing in common with any resurrection of a sports team, a, a, a company, or a church. And the one thing they had in common is they did not lose their enthusiasm about their expectation of what's going to happen tomorrow. We can do great things with enthusiasm. Do you remember years ago there was that guy called the Juice Man who used to sell that juice machine on television? He had the bushiest eyebrows I've ever seen. I was just, he lured me in. I'm like, man, one, one of these days I need to get eyebrows like that so I lose my hair. He's coming back. <laughs> but, but I saw the Juice Man, man, and he had this thing. He was like, we're, we're, today we're just going to make amazing juice. And he would like, and back then it was so incredible. You know, he would take something and he would put a carrot in there. He'd be like, carrot juice. Apple, apple juice. And he would just like make juice out of everything. I didn't realize that that really wasn't that hard. But to me it sounded incredible. He could throw something in the machine and make a, a, a juice out of it, you know. And uh, I was 16 years old. One night I literally, I was so enamored by it. I don't even like that kind of stuff. But I was so captivated by his presentation, I stole my mom's credit card and I bought a juice man machine. I mean, don't you think we as a church of Jesus Christ should be more excited about the product that we have than a dude selling juice? Salvation, forgiveness of sins, second chance, a hope, a redemption of faith, eternal life. Help getting off of drugs, help getting free from addiction. I'm not going to let some juice man get more excited about anything than I am about Jesus. Amen. I'm not going to let Richard Simmons run around in his little red and white striped Speedo shorts, dancing with the oldies, getting pumped up about his diet meals, than I am about Jesus. Amen. Paul's enthusiastic for the gospel. Enthusiasm for the gospel caused the gospel to spread like wildfire. If we can just get excited about God and his word and the verses that we always quote and we let them come alive in our heart, just think what we can do. Our world is full of, of negativity, disdain, fear. We can change it by being enthusiastic about this wonderful life in which God has given us. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great has, was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Winston Churchill said, courage is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. 
Dale Carnegie said, act enthusiastic and you will be enthusiastic. Let me repeat that. Act enthusiastic and you will be enthusiastic. Zig Ziglar said, for every sale you miss because you were too enthusiastic, you will miss a hundred because you weren't enthusiastic enough. Edgar Allan Poe said, there is eloquence in true enthusiasm. Antoine Francis said my favorite one, I prefer the folly of enthusiasm to the indifference of wisdom. Enthusiasm is contagious, and let's start spreading it around. You can lose your money, you can lose your house, you can lose your career, but there's one thing that nobody can ever take away from you, and that is to be excited about the expectation of what God wants to do tomorrow in your life. That is your calling. That's who we're supposed to be. If we're supposed to be light in a dark world, that doesn't mean losing our enthusiasm. It means we need to be enthusiastic about what God's about to do because what's going to happen is we're going to let circumstances crush us to the point where all we do is speak death over our life. And the Bible says you got so many good things going for you. This book has declared promises over your life that guarantee that you're going to make it. You have a Savior that loved you enough to die for you, who already declared you a winner. You have the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Oh my goodness, you have a promise that if you fall, he will pick you back up again. And no matter where you are today, if you've lost your hopes and dreams and future, can I introduce you to someone who can bring the enthusiasm and the passion and the joy back to your life? Hallelujah. No, no. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Oh, it was going to take a victory lap, but uh, we saw what happened last week. Another one bites the dust, but the, the good thing was this. I never lost my enthusiasm even when I hit the ground. Amen. You stay encouraged. Just like you discipline yourself for a, a skill, a knowledge, a wisdom, or anything that you do in life, you've got to discipline yourself to live a life of enthusiasm and a life of encouragement. There's been times in my life where I've gone to churches and I've preached and it's been the deadest crowd I've ever been to in my entire life. It was so dead, I was 50-50 on if there could be a resurrection in that place if Jesus was there. In the flesh, but we know it's true, right? But, I, but I've been to those places, you know what I decided to do? I, I, I didn't fish for amens, I didn't like every fifth word to say, oh, you're not pre pre preaching loud enough back to me. You know, I didn't try to pull it out of them. You know, I just did. I just encouraged myself. I said, Lord, I'm preaching a good message the whole time. Uh, the frozen dozen aren't listening to me. But you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm preaching a good word right now. I just encouraged myself. I said, I don't know if they're getting through or not. But you know what? I'm getting blessed talking about it. Amen. And I just started encouraging myself in the Lord. You can't encourage others until you start encouraging yourself. You got to pump, you got to encourage yourself and you have all the ability to do it because you got the word of God, you've got prayer, you've got worship, you have all these things available to you. You got all these weapons, you got all the items on the buffet. You can eat as much of it as you want. You can read as much as you want. You can listen as much as you want. And it's time that we live a life that is strange to the world. The Bible says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. There is a pattern. There is a group thing. There is a way that people flow. When one, the one thing happens, everyone acts this way. Everyone believes this way. Everyone thinks that right? there's a general spirit that kind of everyone flows with. But the Bible says we shall never be slaves to that, to that conformity. Because we are transformed by the renewing our, of our mind. We are encouraged in the Lord. And we must not bow to a world and a system that says, because of this, this is how we're going to feel. And this, and this is the way, the tone. No, the tone is whatever we decide it's going to be because of what God has declared over our life. You have a promise that if you fall, he's going to pick you back up again. Be enthusiastic about it. Be enthusiastic that God's plans for your life are bigger than you're wondering about how it's all going to shake out. You, can I tell you something? Do you know what the most futile thing in the whole world is? Worrying about what your life is going to be in the next five to ten years. That's the most futile thing because I, if, if my life did not turn out anything like I thought, it was going to take in five to ten years. Why in the world would I have a, like if I had a plan that was geared towards five years, you know what would happen? We wouldn't have a dream center. I have a lot of weaknesses in my life, but there's one strength that I had. I really believe as a kid growing up, and one thing that I learned as a kid is that I'm just going to show up and do what God wants me to do, and wherever he leads me, it's going to happen. So I'm just like preaching on weekends because people ask me to speak. I said, okay, I'll preach, and I wasn't, I 
just because I was Tommy Barnett's son. That's why. They thought I automatically could preach, and I'd stumble and stutter back then and everything. I had a hard time getting through my sermon, just stuttering the whole time, trying to get through. But they thought, you know, you've seen the father, you've seen the son. He's got to be pretty good, right? And so I got there at this open door. I just took it. I didn't know where I was going to leave. I knew God called me to ministry, and I didn't know that I would get invitations at 17. You'll say, well, your dad helped you get ahead. Absolutely. I'm smart enough to take it and not run from it. Amen? Oh, I'm my own man. No, you're not. You sell out. That's irresponsible. Why, why would you not take the influence that you have and use it for something good? Why well, I say, well, I don't need that. I'm my own person. You are not your own person. You are a product of everybody who believed in you, and you take a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and you gain on what God has given you, and you keep going. Everyone has advantages and things in your life. Use them. Your pain is an advantage that someone else might not have, that God could greatly use you in a way nobody else could be used. Use it to your advantage. Don't waste your pain. Be enthusiastic about what you have. Use what you have. And realize that everything that God does for you and opens up for you is a gift that we ought to use to be responsible enough to steward the, the open doors that he gives us. And so, you know, I told God, I said, God, if you've given me all these relationships and contacts, you've seen the preachers on Thursday night and all the people, why, why would I turn that away when I can give a voice to so many people who are struggling with homelessness and addiction? Rather than turn that away, why not use that to build something in, in, in downtown Los Angeles that would serve people that had nobody to fight for them? But enthusiasm is seeing opportunity, it's gathering, it's learning, it's growing. Don't, don't, go get to the place of your life where you over plan your life so much to where you can't pivot to the call of God that he has for your life. Best thing I ever did is rip up my five-year plan. Because you know what my five-year plan did? It limited me. My five-year plan kept me into a box. My five-year plan said this is exactly the church model that works for someone else. It's got to work for me. I just thank God that I ripped up that five-year goal, the plan, and we just started helping and serving people. And Marco's right here. He's one of the first guys to come in and serve with us. Right here. Got his little truck and started going on the street ministry with us. Stand up, Marco. This guy's a legend right here. He's the first guy that came to my side when we first started. Got his old, old truck. He knows the story. We had nothing, but he'd come by and say, man, we've got 300 candy bars. I'm like, what? We're going to give away 300 candy I'm like, that's, that's mind-boggling. But you know what? You spend your life. And you just say, God, in all your ways acknowledge me. I will, you will direct my path. I just acknowledge you with what I have. Three bags of candy, four bags of food. I'm going to be enthusiastic. People say, Pastor, did you get excited when you got into the Dream Center building and you bought it and you, all that uh, miracles of raising the money to get it and all that? Was it when you, you guys had that run where you marched down Hollywood and that was the day you moved into the building? Was that the best day of your life? It was a good day of your life, but you know what? It was just as fun. Back in the days, we threw away the five-year plan, and we just started, like, helping people with whatever we had in our hand. That was just as fun as now, because serving is not a destination. It, it, it's, it's a condition of the heart that just never stops being excited about making a difference in someone else's life. You know what keeps me going? That testimony this morning, oh, my goodness. The fact that she said, come on back. Man, I can, I can ride on that for 30 days right there. That'll give me 30 more days of inspiration. But you got to choose to find things that encourage you and live and say, God, I am not going to allow my life to diminish in enthusiasm. No matter where the world takes it, I'm going to live as a different people, a peculiar people, the Bible calls us, who show forth the praises of our God. And my encouragement to you is, you look every day and find something to be enthusiastic about, something to be excited about, because God has put things around your life every day. And say, God, I will choose to rejoice on what I have, not what I wish I had, and I'm going to build on that foundation and enthusiastically serve you. I say, Pastor, what, what, if, what if I get enthusiastic and the world lets me down and I fall? You saw last week I fell. But you get back up again, and you just keep being encouraged. Keep being encouraged. Keep being encouraged. Keep being encouraged. I'm not talking about being the kind of personality that's like, hey, all the time. But, you know, even if you're chill. Some people are chill, and that's cool. We need chill people for Jesus. But even if you're chill, but still be enthusiastic. Some will be, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, oh, man, I'm good, man. If that's all you got, that's good. I mean, good. Use it. Amen. 
Be chill, enthusiastic, whatever that means. But uh, but every head bowed, every eye closed all over this room today. My sermons don't end at a hard conclusion. They just ramblings that end somewhere. Amen. But today you'll say, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm in a place in my life. I've lost my joy. I've lost my passion. I've lost my, my step. I've lost my place of, uh, of power and authority in Christ Jesus and my, and my power that lives in me. I've rejected the power that lives in me. And, or maybe you've never accepted Christ your Lord and Savior and say, today is the day I need, just need to get my life back right with God. I don't have the foundation of joy because I don't have Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I don't have the beginnings of, of what could be made available to me because I've never said, Christ, be, be the Lord of my life and come into my life and save me and forgive me. But today I want Jesus to be that, that place, that, that, that starting and ending point and everything in between. And I want to know Christ today. When I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over this room. And I believe that God's about to do something incredible. Are you ready? One, all over this building. Two, the Holy Spirit is moving. And when I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over this room. Who will say, now is the time. This is the place. I'm tired of being bound by the oppression of the world. I want to know Jesus Christ today as my Lord and Savior. I want you to raise your hands all over this room. One, two, three, lift them up. They're going up so, so, so many hands going up in a tired world. God has been a refuge to so many. The love of Jesus is just, I feel his love is stronger now in the time that we're living and hands are going up. Some of you are raising your hands. You were debating coming to church because of all the, the warnings, but you came to church and God is blessing your faith right now. Hands are going up. Everyone together, repeat these words after me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross that I will be saved. I repent of my sin, and I look to you, Jesus. You are my salvation. You are my joy. You are my enthusiasm and the foundation of everything. I repent of my sin, and I lay it at the foot of the cross for a brand new beginning. In Jesus' name, Amen. And, and there's others of you today who say, Pastor, I've just, come on, yeah, give the Lord praise all over this, but that's awesome. There's others that will say, Pastor, I just, I've lost maybe a layer or two or of that enthusiasm in my life. Just life, circumstances, pain, heartache, rejection, things, any type of circumstances, just I feel like it's taking me down a little bit to a level where I'm just not where I used to be. And I just don't have that natural projection of, as was preached about Thursday night, that, that there's a little bit of that moral place in my life, that little bitter place in my life. I want God to heal. I want God to start brand new today with my life from a whole new perspective of here I am right now. And my heart has been touched by God. And I, and I just, I want God to restore that place of joy in my life that I've lost. I want him to re refocus me and give me strength and conviction that I, ought to that I can live a life that's above the fray and the noise and the sound. And I just need God to encourage me. But I believe God's going to anoint you with a new desire. The joy is returning. Everyone that feels like in your life you've lost a level of that joy and that, that supernatural encouragement that comes from just knowing that God is your source and being so confident of that, and that place is left. But you want God to begin to anoint you today, and you want to receive the strength for all this to return. I want you to raise your hands all over this room. Say, uh, yes. You might, no, but no one on the servers might even know you're dealing with this in your life, and that you might even be less, but you know where you used to be. You know where you were. You know where you can be. And God just doesn't restore you to the best place you've ever been. He creates new mountains and new altitudes Hands are going up everywhere. I want to do so. I just want to close in worship and sing this once, uh, sing a couple times through. But let's just all stand to our feet. And I just pray right now. I just want you right now, just we're going to close a little bit different. I just want you just to worship the Lord. And I just want you right now just to receive. Just get really greedy right now. Say, God, I want joy to just come back into my life. Just let God speak to you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord, God, returning into our life, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Your goodness and mercy will follow after me. So if you will not find me, cause I'll be dwelling in the house of God. Surely you could. strength and may we live on that top side mountain Lord and even at times we fall off the mountain let us build our foundation so high that we still land on a high hill God we thank you Lord for new altitudes and new perspectives today and I just pray God we would just start letting that joy cut loose within our life God and break free from everything that's held it back in Jesus name amen amen I love you guys God bless you so much